Who here thinks this hamburger looks good? No, like, no one else does? <laughs> it's 12 o'clock. It's lunchtime. Well, I used to be like many of you. I used to think this hamburger looked delicious. That is until I discovered what it's actually made out of. And no, it's not just meat. Four years ago, I listened to my sister give a speech on a similar topic. And four years ago was the last time I took a bite of a factory farm meal a factory farm product of a factory farm restaurant. So, hopefully after listening to my speech today, I'll be successful in persuading you to stop the consumption of factory farm meat. I would like each one of you to stop eating and endorsing at factory farm restaurants for three reasons. Animal cruelty, poor nutrition, and incorrect methods of slaughter. Who doesn't love meat? Aside from vegetarians, of course, most of us are meat eaters. There are so many different types and they're also delicious. You've got your steak, your turkey, your hickory honey ham, buffalo, and so on. If you can't tell, I'm a meat lover. I even tried to be vegetarian for once. It lasted for two days. That being said, I'm not here to persuade you to quit eating meat. I'm here to persuade you the right kind of meat. So what does the factory farm do exactly? SustainableTable.com defines them as consolidated operations which are able to produce food in high volume but have little to no regard for the environment, animal welfare, or food safety. Once they raise the, animal, once they raise the animals and have them as large as possible, they are then sent out to slaughterhouses, then sent out to restaurants such as McDonald's, Hardee's, Wendy's, KFC, Taco Bell, and Hardee's. I can understand why Americans choose to eat at these fast food restaurants. It's quick, convenient, and affordable. And especially in our society today, especially college students like ourselves, many of us don't have the time or money to cook an all organic meal at home. At McDonald's or Wendy's, we can get fed in 10 minutes for $5. And while that's great and all, we need to look at the bigger picture here behind the Ronald McDonald House and see what these factory farms are not only doing to the animals, but to our health. An 89 cent taco cannot be good for your health. We need to slow down and take a look at what really goes into our value meal. The first thing is animal cruelty. According to PETA, thousands of animals are crammed into filthy, windowless sheds, confined to barren dirt lots, gestation cages, and other cruel confinement systems. They won't get a chance to root around the soil, build nests, raise their families, or do anything that is natural or important to them. The factory farms aim at one thing, maximize their profit and minimize their costs, which is usually at the animal's expense. The corporations that run these factory farms make more money if they are able to shove as many animals as possible into one place. These crammed spaces prevent them from exercising, so the only energy they have is exerted towards producing meat, eggs, or milk for humans. In addition to providing poor nutrition, or in addition to providing, treating the animals with cruelty, the factory farms also inject artificial hormones providing poor nutrition for the animals and the human consumer. Bringing me to my second point. Animals are injected with artificial hormones and steroids that increase growth speed and size. The drug is keeping them alive in conditions that otherwise might kill them. According to farmsanctuary.org, between six months and a year of age, cattle are moved from pasture to feedlots and to be fattened for slaughter. Calves gain weight on an unnatural diet and reach a market weight of 1,200 pounds in just six months. They also report that in the name of increased milk production and profit, some dairy cows are repeatedly injected with a genetically engineered bovine growth hormone that has been known to have increases the risk of health problems like lameness and mastitis. Lameness meaning you have difficulty walking. Once they are large enough, the animals are then sent in an overcrowded chuck and travel an extended amount of time to the slaughterhouse. They don't have food or water. According to OrganicConsumers.com, 70% of U.S. pigs have pneumonia at the time of slaughter, bringing me to my third and final point. Most remain conscious at the time of slaughter or while being thrown into hot water or to be defeathered or while their bodies are being skinned and chopped apart. 
Animals legally are supposed to be stunned before the slaughter, meaning they'll become insensible to this pain. But AnimalSuffering.com reports that a majority of these plants, the stunning isn't working, leaving the animals in excruciating pain. So wrapping up, factory farms are places where animals are abused, provided with poor nutrition, and sent to slaughterhouses with incorrect methods. I hope that in listening to my speech today, I persuaded you to stop the consumption of factory farm meat. The animals can't speak, so we must speak for them. There are three ways you can help. Become a vegetarian, or if you're like me and that's far too difficult, you can end all support of factory farm restaurants and products, and instead, choose to support a family farm restaurant where the animals are treated correctly and nicely, such as Arby's, Steak and Shake, or Chick-fil-A. So next time you're driving and you pass a McDonald's or Wendy's, do yourself and the animals a favor and keep on driving. Thank you.